Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and to the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. Y'all, the day is here. I was honestly wondering when this day was going to come because I was like, I know Morphe is not dumb. I just know it. And sure enough, Morphe came out with skincare and I unfortunately have thoughts. <laughs> Cries and controversy. I recently got these products in the mail and I just, I, I have some thoughts. <laughs> I mean, when do I not have thoughts? Honestly, I've waited a long time for Morphe to come out with skincare. And I mean, let's be honest, Morphe championed influencer cosmetic brands. Like they really showed the world how it's done. And I remember when I first was interested in Morphe, when I saw all the big beauty gurus recommending these palettes and they were a really small company and I bought my own palette to who they are now, which is this huge company that is just massive. And Morphe is very intelligent. I mean, I give them a lot of credit for the strategy that they used in utilizing influencer marketing to sell their products. I mean, they were doing it at a time when no other company really was. They're smart, but I was like, Morphe is gonna come out with a skincare brand. Like it's gonna happen. Like they have to know that there's just as many opportunities within the skincare industry as there is in the makeup industry. It took them a little while, but they're here. They have skincare and I had high hopes. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. I had really high hopes for this brand. They may or may not have disappointed me. We shall see. I'm gonna talk about my feelings on these products, what it's like after I've tried them, the ingredient list, because ingredients don't lie, bitch. And at the end, tell you whether I think the brand is worth it or not. So let's get into it. Now looking at the skincare overall, this was from their Morphe 2 collection. Now Morphe 2, I believe Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio were the faces of Morphe 2, and it's all about like fun, creativity, simplicity, more natural looks, opposed to what Morphe is more typically known for, which is very bold, dramatic, artistry type of makeup. And when I saw them come out with Morphe 2, I was like, oh, that's that is that's smart because Gen Z is not the same generation as all of us when we used to overdraw our eyebrows put the hard lines there like two poles and overdraw our lips until we look like clowns no but seriously Morphe is more focused on artistry while Morphe 2 is more focused on the simplicity the natural type of energy that Gen Z brings with them and the skincare line is in their Morphe 2 collection and automatically looking at these products the first thing I thought when I saw these was okay they are definitely trying to appeal to a teenage audience well, you know when you see brands that really like market and design themselves to be very like fun Fun and energetic and youthful. I will say I'm not a teenager myself, but it's very evident like they are trying to appeal to a very young audience. And I'll be 100% honest, I don't know if that's working for them. Because when I see products like this, I automatically think like it's very different from what Gen Z is currently loving and exploring within the skincare world. When you look at what Gen Z is purchasing, it's brands like The Ordinary, CeraVe, The Inky List. I don't see a lot of Gen Z buying brands that are focused on the aesthetics, the colors, the fragrances, all of that. And I think that's why I love y'all so much because you guys are particular and very critical about what you want in your skincare products just like myself <laughs> cheers to all our picky asses picky asses i don't know how but that sounds wrong but again looking at this brand i'm like i am definitely not the clientele that they are trying to appeal to and therefore overall the aesthetics and the marketing it just it's not really for me but let's talk about the formulas because that's the shit that really matters. So first off, I do want to say thank you to Morphe for sending me these products. I didn't even know y'all had my address. I was honestly planning to go out and buy the products myself, but thank you nonetheless for sending them. So as usual, I'm going to be ordering these from my least favorite to my favorite, starting with the, oh my gosh, where is it? <laughs> I literally have used it like five times and I forgot where it was. I'm sorry, I promise I've used this product. It is the Lippy Lullaby Lip Sleeping Mask. Oh, I'm surprised I said that all in one go. I struggle with, you know any type of pronunciation whatsoever. This claims to be an overnight lip mask to help deeply hydrate and give your lips a shine. If you're new to my channel, you don't know the struggle that I go through trying to find good lip masks or just lip products in general. I am someone who struggles with extremely dry lips. I don't know why I have to apply a regular chapstick like eight times a day if I want my lips to stay hydrated and it is always a struggle trying to find a good lip product. Now, I know that my lips are very particular so I'm not expecting the world of every single lip product out there but it does make me be a little bit more critical of the products that I use. As far as beneficial ingredients, this does have hydrogenated polyisobutane, which is not necessarily an amazing ingredient, but it's good for conditioning and kind of creating a seal over top of the skin. And a lot of synthetic polymers, which are basically ingredients that are supposed to seal in any water from escaping your lips. But honestly, looking at those ingredients, I wasn't like necessarily blown away by anything. There were ingredients that yes, technically work alongside each other to create a beneficial seal, but nothing that wows me in or would convince me that this product would be really effective. It does have some good ingredients like squalane, a moisturizing oil. That's one of my favorite ingredients. Muru Muru Butter, one of my 
favorite moisturizing ingredients out there, but one that I very rarely see in a lot of products, but it's great for really conditioning and moisturizing the skin. But unfortunately, both of these ingredients are way low on the ingredient list. So low that they're actually lower than an ingredient that concerns me a little bit. It's an ingredient called BHT. I'm not even gonna bother trying to pronounce that word. <laughs> you guys can read it right here. I'm lazy today, bitch, okay? Now BHT has different functions in a skincare product, but a lot of times it's added as a preservative. And a lot of people in like the more natural and clean beauty movement demonize BHT and think that it's this cancerous or toxic ingredient. When in reality, it just comes down to the concentration. And when it's at a really low concentration in a product, it's not harmful. It works well. And in my opinion, there's nothing really to be scared of. However, in higher concentrations, there is some risk of skin sensitivity, but that's not what concerns me most about this ingredient. There have been some studies showing negative and adverse and potentially really, really risky side effects when BHT is ingested orally. And I don't know the exact percentage of BHT used in this product, but when I look at the ingredient list, it's listed above squalane and shea butter and right underneath water and near the top of the ingredient list which communicates to me that it could very easily be above the 1% line. And 1% of BHT, in my opinion, is way too much to have in a skincare product just because of sensitivity risk, but specifically an oral product because you are using this product on your mouth and it's inevitable that some of the product will be ingested. And with those major concerns when BHT is ingested orally, I'm just like, why, first of all, is it in a lip mask, but why is it at this high of a concentration? I am not the person to get on the, let's call this ingredient toxic train at all. But when I see something like this, I do get a little bit concerned and regardless, even if the ingredient is under 1%, it's still listed higher than the beneficial ingredients like squalane, shea butter, and muru muru butter. So regardless, I'm kind of disappointed with this mask and the icing on top of the cake. I did not like the experience. It's actually very sticky on the lips. It doesn't feel very comfortable. And I found myself having to reapply it 15 minutes after the first time, which shows me that it really doesn't have that much moisturizing power. So overall, not a fan of this product whatsoever. I think they should change that ingredient just regardless. Honestly, guys, if you want the best lip mask I have ever found in my life, get the Primera Miracle Seed Lip Mask. It's a little expensive, but it lasts forever. Oh wait, no, it's the Clean Berry Lip Mask. I always call it the Miracle Seed Lip Mask, even though they have their Miracle Seed Essence. Sorry, kind of confusing. That one remains to this day the best lip mask I've ever used and it lasts forever. That thing takes so damn long to get through. Highly recommend that one. The next one is the Lil Pick Me Up 3-in-1 Face Mist. Now, my relationship with face mist is very meh. I don't necessarily have anything against the concept of a face mist, but a lot of the times I wonder first why it's necessary and why it's not better to use it in a serum because inevitably when you're using a face mist, okay, oh my gosh. <laughs> I think it got a little trapped up. Normally this thing is not that sensitive. You're losing so much of the product in the air because a lot of it just flies away and does not apply to your face. But the main reason I'm a little iffy about sprays is that they tend to have a lot of fragrance and irritants. And you're gonna be applying this multiple times a day to your face. So you're reintroducing those irritants over and over and over again. This one says it can be used to tone, set makeup, or refresh the skin. I don't see anything in this that would particularly set the makeup, but I will say looking at the ingredients, it doesn't necessarily have anything that would disrupt disrupt the makeup on the surface of the skin, which is good. I think that's good for a face mist. As far as ingredients I like, it has glycerin, good for hydrating the skin. The fifth ingredient is niacinamide, so love to see that. Sodium hyaluronate, a concentrated form of hyaluronic acid, as well as hyaluronic acid. So it does have a good amount of that humectant property to draw on water from the air into your skin. Unfortunately, this has fragrance parfum, undisclosed, so we don't know what fragrance ingredients are being used. It has parfum, which usually means that it's gonna be a blend of both natural and synthetic fragrance, both of which are just as irritating as each other, as well as hexyl cinnamol, limonene, linalool, and yellow six. That's one thing I've noticed with Morphe products is that they really like their dyes. And not that dyes necessarily completely turn me off to a product, but just looking from skincare from a necessity point of view to where it's like, what is necessary to improve the quality of this formula and what isn't, I don't think dyes are necessary and they're only added to make it a certain color. So little disappointed with that. Most of all, disappointed in the amount of fragrance used in this product. Because this one has a good amount of fragrance, I can't recommend this because you are going to be reapplying it to your face over and over and over again. And I'll be honest, I used this once and immediately it was not for me. I'm the type of person where my skin is combination, but mostly oily because of the human environment here. And the last thing I need is for my skin to look more shiny than it already is. Because bitch, my skin is so oily that when you look at it, you see your reflection. It's bad. And while yes, I like that this this product has niacinamide. I'm like, why couldn't we have put it in a serum? That way you wouldn't be losing all the niacinamide in the air from using a spray. I don't know. I'm still not totally convinced about facial sprays, but regardless, I don't think this is a great ingredient list and I don't recommend it. Honestly, if you're wanting the ingredient benefits of a face mist, just use a serum. Serums have way higher concentration of those beneficial ingredients. You're not going to be losing a lot of product in the air. It won't mess up your makeup. It's just going to be a way better experience. And I, I don't know, I'm still not sold on the whole face mist thing. The next product is the Total Softy Gel Moisturizer. Now, 
love this one. I was really excited about because automatically when I looked at the ingredient list, my eyes were like, oh. heart eye emoji. I was really excited. I like the airless pump packaging and gel moisturizers have my heart. What can I say? The reason why when I was looking at the ingredients, it has propylic triglyceride, a great ingredient for moisturizing and conditioning the skin. Squalane is the third ingredient. So you are getting a good amount of squalane and squalane and more gel like moisturizers. is not as easy for me to find yet. It's an incredible ingredient. So whenever I can find a product that does work well to not overly hydrate, but still uses the ingredient squalane, I'm like, bravo. It has propanediol, a great ingredient for moisturizing the skin, dimethicone, which is a great ingredient to help seal in any water from being lost. And contrary to popular belief, no, dimethicone is not toxic. There's not enough unbiased evidence to support that statement. Jojoba oil, one of my favorite face oils for oily skin and niacinamide. So automatically when I was looking at this ingredient list, I was like, wow, this is really good. Definitely better than a standard moisturizer. I was very impressed until I got to the bottom of the ingredient list. Of course it has fragrance perfume. It has hexyl cinnamol, linalool, and limonene, all of which are fragrant components signifying the use of irritating fragrant essential oils. And the final nail in the coffin for this one is that when I used it, oh my God, it smells like a perfume. It literally smells like Bath and Body Works body lotions. That's how fragranced it is. I was kind of horrified. Yeah, it's so much fragrance. So they really did not go in light. And it's just so disappointing because the texture is so nice. It sinks into the skin. It has a great ingredient list, but unfortunately because of how strong the fragrance is, I just, I can't recommend this one. And I was pretty disappointed. <laughs> no. If you want a really good gel moisturizer that actually has a very similar ingredient list to this, get the Bubble Balancing Gel Moisturizer. It was one of my favorite moisturizers of 2020. It's a great price point. I think very similar to this one. Absorbs so quickly in the skin. It never leaves your skin oily, but has amazing ingredients with no fragrance or irritants. Next is the Restart Detox Face Mask. And I will say, Aesthetically, this one's really pretty. It does have like little pink shimmers in it and the purple color is really cute. Like it kind of reminds me of the Tatcha face mask. Whenever I've used that face mask, I'm just like, oh, I look so pretty. <laughs> I just love that purple, I don't know why. Ooh, and that's the only product I know that's purple like that that has a face mask. Mm, maybe Morphe's trying to come for Tatcha. Allegedly, I'm not saying that's the reality. <laughs> don't come for me, Morphe. Automatically, I was intrigued by this face mask because I'm a little bit more forgiving when it comes to fragrance and face masks because they're not a leave-on treatment. You leave them on for like 15 minutes and then you rinse them off afterwards. And when I looked at the ingredient list, the good ingredients are that it has glycerin, which, you know, is a basic but good hydrating ingredient, and magnesium aluminum silicate, which is a good clay that helps to draw impurities from the skin. However, I was so disappointed to find that the second ingredient is polyvinyl alcohol, which immediately told me two things. This is a peel-off face mask, and two, this formula is risking irritation. When it comes to peel-off face masks, they typically use the ingredient polyvinyl alcohol, which not only gives that like peeling satisfying effect, but it can also dry out and sensitize the skin. Now, polyvinyl alcohol isn't the worst thing in the world, but when I see it as the second ingredient, I am immediately turned off because first of all, I don't think it adds anything productive to the skin and it does give this, you know, satisfying peel off effect, but it also has a higher risk of sensitivity and people are gonna be excluded from using it for that reason. Finally, just because I personally am not a believer in peel off face masks, I think they're more hype than anything. And while yes, they're fun to use, they're satisfying, you're still risking irritation on your skin. And I just don't think it's worth it when you could be using much better masks out there. This also has lavender oil, linalool. Again, not the worst thing in a mask, but still it just kind of adds to the pile of things I don't like about this product. My recommendation, just don't go for peel off face masks. They're really just not worth it. And you're going to see so much better results from a real face mask. If you want to know some of my face mask recommendations, go watch my video in the description box below. I talk about all my favorite face masks there. And then finally, the best product I can find from the line, <laughs> their bubbly fresh gel to foam cleanser. This one is kind of the bottom of the barrel. I'm not going to lie. I'm just going to be hundred percent honest. It is not not the worst, but I don't think I'm going to continue using this one. The great thing about it is that looking at the ingredient list, there's no harsh surfactants, which are cleansing agents that can overly strip the skin and really dry it out, which is great because I really do believe in gentle cleansing and that we shouldn't be using overly harsh cleansing agents. But, and it does have good ingredients like aloe, apple, glycolic acid, and spirulina, which are great for not only hydrating the skin, but also gently exfoliating it. However, all of those ingredients seem to be below the 1% line, and the only ingredients above the 1% line are your basic level cleansing agents. I think particularly beneficial. And here's the thing when it comes to a cleanser, you don't need it to have the most incredible ingredient list ever because you're only gonna have it on your face for 30 seconds. So it's not a huge deal. And even though this one has fragrance, cinema, linalool, red dye, and blue dye, I'm still a little bit more forgiving for those because again, you're only leaving it on your face for 30 seconds. But it's still to me no better than a basic drugstore cleanser. And so I'm not necessarily upset at this product, but I'm definitely not impressed. It's just kind of basic. The thing that hurts me <laughs> about this cleanser is that the fragrance 
fragrance is so strong. The second I opened it, I was like, okay, this either smells like hand soap or hair gel. The fragrance is so dang strong. Uh, so, uh, I mean, if you do like really fragranced products, then I guess this could be for you. But for me personally, while I'm not bothered by fragrance in a cleanser, it's so strong that I don't want to use it anymore. It's, it's just way too strong of a smell. So yeah, this is the best product from the line, but I'm still like disappointed. So now what are my overall thoughts on Morphe 2 skincare? I'm just going to be honest, guys. I'm very disappointed. Given that Morphe has been one of the most intelligent brands when it comes to influencer marketing, I thought they would know what Gen Z specifically wants from skincare and understand to create fragrance-free formulas, non-irritating formulas, great ingredient lists. But looking at this line, it really does look like they're creating basic skincare products that are not at all about quality and only about smelling nice and looking cute. And I have to say, I'm really tired of brands thinking that Gen Z only cares about the fragrance and the smell and the experience and undermining their intelligence and their ability to look at an ingredient list and judge how good the product is from the ingredients. And while ingredients don't tell us the whole story, like there's so much more beyond that, it's all we have to be able to know about the quality of a product. And looking at these ingredients, I'm just like, wow, I'm really disappointed. I'm very surprised because Morphe is very intelligent and I thought for sure they were going to come out with a skincare brand that checked off all the boxes of what Gen Z wants, but that just doesn't seem to be the case. I'd say the only redeeming quality is their price point. Their price point is relatively cheap, but even as I say that, you can find much better products at the drugstore, like honestly, any CeraVe product, Elf Skincare, Honest Beauty, Verse Skincare, all those brands are right around the same price point and have way better ingredient lists. So yeah, I have to say, I'm just disappointed. However, I am not giving up on you, Morphe. Morphe is smart. Morphe knows what the internet wants. And honestly, I feel like their corporate team is probably kicking themselves right now and wishing they would have created better formulas because I'm just, I don't know, I'm not impressed with these. But of course, this is all just my opinion. This is all just my personal belief. That being said though, I don't think that Morphe skincare is worth it. I'm sorry, Morphe. Thank you again for sending me the products. You're probably never going to send me anything again. <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I don't mind buying products. Like I literally was about to go out and buy all of these until I saw that they sent me them. So it's nothing on my shoulders. I don't care. I'd much rather be honest about my feelings. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would love to see your thoughts, what your opinions are on this brand. And yeah, um, I hope that in the future Morphe does better. And if you guys haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.